Middle Eastern music in the beginning of the 90s, like 92, like kebab music. It was the most unlikely thing I've seen in my entire life. Christian Arab girls in Israel playing bagpipes. Normally girls don't even play bagpipes. So. Christian Arab small girls playing bagpipes in Israel. Yeah, I like weird stuff. It was just very, very unlikely. I mean. So, welcome in Israel. Thank you. Uh, and the first question. Uh, not every deep read person uh, knows about Vladimir Solovyov and his work uh, in contradistinction to uh, Dostoevsky, Bulgakov, Tolstoy. Uh, how did you come up to this work, to, uh, to three short stories of Antichrist? Well, I do have a library at home, so I'm, I'm very literate anyway. Um, but um, I had a like a Russian period for a while where I, I read a little bit Dostoevsky, but I didn't like it so much. Um, I was more into Bulgakov, and I basically bought everything that was translated by Bulgakov. Um, and then, while I was in this period, I just came across Solovyov, and I mean, Antichrist must be a cool book, you know? A uh, short tale of Antichrist, so it's only that, that part that I bought mm -hmm. in the three stories, was just, just this specific one. And, well, it was an interesting story, and not much more about that, and then uh, much later, I uh, had the idea of making um, a classical opera, and I wanted a dark theme because you know I could never make a love story or um, a comedy. You know, I'm, I couldn't write enough music to fill an opera with that type of style. Uh, so I need a dark theme, but at the same time, I want something which is classical literature because if I would make something new. It would be dismissed. It would be like, of course, fucking heavy metal guy needs to do some devil worshipping <laughs> bullshit, you know? So I thought, let's take some classic thing. And the idea first actually was to do a, a Master and Margarita, because mm -hmm. it's a f fantastic story. But I thought it's it's too big story. Um, I, I cannot make music for that. You know? it's, if, if you do a couple of operas and you get very good, then you can take one of these eternal classical stories. But it's, a, it's a too, too complicated and, and too, too good to fuck up. Okay. So I thought, let's start with something simpler and short tale of Antichrist. Yeah, yeah. short tale. I can make something more like an oratorium, like one hour or something. Uh, while Master and Margarita would have required, I don't know, like a quadrology, like mm -hmm. Wagner's Ring, you know, like four operas to tell yeah. the story. So. Uh, I decided to work with Solovyev, but I realized rather fast that this story won't make it very well as a theater. Mm -hmm. um, much of it could be good for a movie, but as a theater it just it would be difficult to conduct it. So I rewrote the beginning, and I also, you know, the beginning is like a separate story. It has nothing to do with the story later, so anyway it was easy to remove it. Also, um, it reflects very much the geopolitical situation back then, which a lot of people today don't really understand, so they tend to misunderstand it. Um, and the, the end also was a bit problematic to me, because it's very, sh it's very short. No. It's, it's just ends. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck happened? You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, an opera needs to have an epic ending. With, like, yeah. if you die in an opera, you just don't die. You, you have to sing for five minutes about <laughs> your, how you die. Uh, so we needed a more operatic end. And also, I don't really like happy endings. So you killed everyone? Yeah, and also depends on who you ask what is happy ending. Because our fans would be like, what? Antichrist lost? I can't believe it. <laughs> you know? And then... Uh, if, if we would let Antichrist win, everybody will of course say like, oh, you changed the story, you're a devil worshiper. <laughs> so let's just kill everybody and everybody will be equally unhappy. And it's also very operatic, you know? And opera should be tragedy, everybody die. Yeah. I, I, so I just love that. And when I, once I started to change it, I also mm -hmm. changed tons of stuff in the middle of it. Um, so in the end, there are just a few scenes left. And among the things I, I changed, which was one of the first things was, the fact that it lacks female characters. 
um, which musically is very dull and boring with, with the no female voices, uh, but also for the dynamics of the story. Because even if I wouldn't like to make a love story, an opera should have uh, some sort of love drama in it. You know, you have a total death, of yeah, love, death, mm -hmm. betrayal, different loyalties. So uh, we created um, uh, a wife for Antichrist and made the um, uh, sister of his wife his worst enemy. Yeah. You know, to create a plot. You know. And yeah, I think we've made a really good story out of a pretty decent book. But you have to remember the book was. He wasn't meant to entertain, it was a prophecy. He actually thought this is what's going to happen when he wrote. So it's not a good story because he didn't try to entertain you. He tried I to, got to this warn book because you. of you, by the way. Because yeah. uh, when I saw, okay, Serum, prepare metal opera based on Vladimir Sovyov and me like, okay, Vladimir Sovyov, never heard about it. I uh, read it and uh, you changed a lot of things. But why uh, can't you do the same thing with uh, Master and Margarita? Oh, it's holy. Change in Master and Margarita. It's like, why don't you change in Lord of the Rings? You know, it's the same way. Uh, kind <laughs> of based, like uh, I can make. Um, I can tell, for example, like Three Musketeers, hmm. that was changed dramatically from the comedy to the tragedy. Yeah, yeah I could change that, but, but not Master and Margarita. It's the best book ever written in the history of mankind. You don't change in that one and even if we could change actually I wouldn't need to change the big problem with that one is that it's too long mm -hmm. I need to write four operas to tell that story at least maybe more and the, my big problem also is that I cannot write uh, recitatives a recitative is a mixture between singing and talking yeah. which you use to move the story onwards faster if you're gonna sing everything with melodies, it takes forever to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And that's why we ended up with a four-hour opera to tell this short story. And I was okay. devastated when I realized this is four hours, what the fuck should I do? So I cut it down to three and a half hour, mm -hmm. and we recorded that. And when I listened to the recording, I was still like, people are gonna die and be reborn before they get through this <laughs> opera. You know? People will be in a coma, it's not gonna work. So I shortened it down to three hours and four minutes which is like a director's cut okay and for the staging of the opera I'm imagining maybe to, to do like a, I think two hours 25 minutes is the shortest we can do without ruining the story completely um, as a you know rock opera for dummies version mm -hmm. that could work commercially and then if it's successful we can put up the full version for the connoisseurs you know, for the people who you know are noble enough to go through this. Okay. The problem is like the people who are used to this, like Wagnerians who will listen to these six hour operas, they wouldn't listen to a metal opera. They think it's rubbish. Uh, so and the people who are interested so? in metal, well, there are some individuals like me, you know, of course. you, you know, but it wouldn't be enough people to make it work financially. Mm -hmm. It would be a few hundred enthusiasts, maybe. But the people who are, would be open to a, a, a rock musical with opera vocals, they, they don't have that patience. Okay, and you said that you recorded something like four and a half hours of music and... Uh... Four, we wrote four hours, Okay. recorded three and a half and released three hours and four minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, do we as mere mortal men, uh, can we listen to some things that uh, you're not included in the opera? Or yeah. everything you wanted to put in the opera, you put it there? No, I think the, the three and a half hour version, I mean, if it would be a runaway box office success, like everybody, wow, you know, then I'm sure there would be somebody mm -hmm. who would say, let's put up the, the long extended version. But in all honesty, I don't think it's going to be that, that famous. I, I hope that it's, it's going to work, that we can you know, make it successful, maybe it make the, the director's cut version. Mm -hmm. uh, and the unreleased stuff will probably be released on CD only, like the leftover, the cutouts. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, in uh, form, former USSR, in Russian uh, theatrical and cinema circus, Master Margarita uh, think like uh, kind, some kind of uh, damn work because every time that uh, they want to put it on stage or uh, film it, 
some some real bad things happened, like uh, decorations were born, uh, buildings were born, actors died, and uh, all the stuff. Uh, I know that you also had some problems in your tours with uh, burning bus, oh, yeah. uh, electricity. <laughs> Don't you feel that you created one more damn opera? Well, I would be proud <laughs> if you did that, you know. I like doing original <laughs> things, and that's only what you heard already because of legal reasons i cannot tell you everything that happened in england mm -hmm. but a bus on fire was actually a vacation compared to what happened later it was oh. like totally insane in 31 years career more happened in the first two weeks of this tour than in our, our entire career okay uh, in terms of weird bad stuff well hope you are okay now you and yeah, the man. but it, it's like like a battlefield, like, you know, God sent the grasshoppers and, you know, he sent the plagues mm -hmm. and the floods and all that. But, you know, us who stood up for it, we were rewarded by the devil or something. You know, because, like, we had the two worst tour buses I've ever seen in my entire life. Not only the two worst that I've been on, the, the worst that I've even seen. Okay. And once we endured this, and I said, fix this by tomorrow where I cancel the rest of the tour we go home. Then we had the best tour bus we ever had in our career. I, I even had my own room in the tour bus. I haven't even seen that. So uh, it's really a, like a war between the two balances. Uh, we, we've had some really insanely weird bad stuff happening. Also like, yeah, electricity problems with like three venues, I think, or two bad ones and one. Uh, I wrote so only about one that you mentioned in uh, Facebook or something. We, we had another one and <laughs> in uh, Vilnius. Okay. In uh, uh, it's Lithuania. Estonia. Lithuania. Lithuania, yeah. And uh, the fuse would go all the time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I told, uh, this is crazy, I, I told uh, uh, the, the guy of the club, like, okay, you have a dip switch and mm -hmm. I have an electricity education. so. I want you to tape the dip switch so it cannot, you know, this. Yeah, can't fall. Yeah, but then it can start burning. So I want you to tape it and have a guy standing next to it watching it while we play. And if it gets warm and if it starts smoke, you have to immediately switch it off, you know? Well, well most likely the say, main. Most say likely, you did it. The, the, yeah, most likely the main fuse would go anyway mm -hmm. because you have double security. But so this guy had to stand and look on the fuse, you know, for two hours while we play. <laughs> oh, well. so, you know, at, le at least you played. <laughs> yeah, creative solutions. Uh, crazy creative solutions. Uh, but uh, we had also insanely good things, very unlikely things. Uh, this is really a mixed bag. Among the best things that ever happened in our career happened on this tour. Some things I, I cannot reveal yet. And uh, among the worst also. It's absolutely dualism. Yeah. We are the battlefield of Definitely well, I hope you have some rest from your war, so-called. Uh, by the way, uh, did you ever had some problems in uh, some religious countries like Poland or uh, countries that have uh, some Orthodox fanatics, like with, for my sorrow it happened in Russia last year with your lyrics, with uh, the names of an album, especially now, The Wolf Antichrist. Well, of course it could be some stupid person who doesn't bother to, to read the story. If you only read the title, it's, it's a provocative title, uh, obviously, that's how you market things. I mean, if you want to market something, you make people speak about it. And uh, it, it's a very catchy title that, you know, it, it gets stuck immediately, mm -hmm. people remember it, and it's a bit provocative. Uh, but the story itself is not provocative. Of course, if you're a soul of your die-hard fanatic, you will say we're bastards to change the story. But in all honesty, most people in Russia, uh, even Orthodox Christians, don't know Solovyov. It's, it's for intellectuals, uh, intellectual Christians. Yes, fanatics. but you know, for fanatics, they don't need to read Solovyov. They just need to see the Wolf Antichrist, and their Satanist cancel it. Well, it would be truly embarrassing. I mean, imagine if there would be a, a Russian TV show and you invite somebody to like, oh, why are you against them? And like, oh, I haven't read the story. You know? I would, I would mock 
publicly anybody who would dare to say that like this is a satanic story or something. It's directly anti-intellectual to claim something like that. It's it's simple entertainment, and we were very keen on the fact that everybody should be able to view this as entertainment. You're a Christian, you're a um, Satanist, or you're um, atheist, it doesn't matter. It's like watching a movie, it's just entertainment. There's no moral in it, there's no lesson to learn in it. It's just We're talking about the old Antichrist, not yeah. the original story, because the original yeah. story, is, it has very Christian moral. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I don't like. I don't want to, to have any uh, religious preaching. I just want mm -hmm. entertainment, and I found it in his story. In one way, I could just say it's our story, but it, that would be dishonest, because our story wouldn't exist without his story. We, we took the idea of an Antichrist uh, who has a choice mm -hmm. if he becomes Antichrist or not, which I, I really enjoyed. And um, we, we took the whole idea of the time frame, but we put it in the future because, well, this was written in a time where they made predictions that didn't happen, so it would be weird, you know. Okay. Uh, that's why we rather put it in a future, like, steampunkish scenario. Mm -hmm. So you would have the technology of the time of the book, but in the future. Uh, it, when you get uh, some bad reviews, when you read them, uh, you get disappointed or you rather get angry? We always had a few bad reviews for every album, and most of them have turned out to be plain out wrong. I mean, we had reviews uh, from the Tilly area, but they said we were over pretentious shit who just repeat the same thing over and over. And I re even remember one who said, Therion should step down from the pedestal that nobody but themselves had put them, so, uh, them on. Like, okay. what the fuck? We just made a record that we wrote the music we like and release it, and he's like telling us we're trying to be, you know, and, and that type of thing. And somebody wrote about uh, Vovin like, oh, well, the Tilly album, you know, was so powerful and good, and but Vovin just makes me feel sad and empty afterwards. I mean, how many fans would agree with that, that you feel sad and empty after listening to a best-selling album? Why do you, as an author, as a creator, think that people are stubbornly, they don't want to see uh, The Wolf Antichrist as a metal opera, but see it like a triple album? Yeah, well, that's one of the main mistakes they do, and it's partly our own fault because we're releasing the soundtrack first. It's, it's like if you, if you have a movie mm -hmm. and you release a soundtrack before the movie, it will confuse people. You, you see the movie first and if you like it, you can buy the soundtrack. And if Jesus Christ Superstar would have been released on the album first, people would have been like, what the fuck is this? Uh, so it's something you should watch on stage first and buy later, but due to financial reasons, we had to release it first. Uh, um, on the record and when I see the bad reviews which are very few by the way but the main thing there seems to be that they misunderstood what it is they're they're making a false review because they don't review what it is okay. and if it would be an over three hour long triple album then I would understand the objections but a, a lot of the music is written because of what happens on stage. It's, it's not like I, I thought, let's write a song that goes like this, you know. You have something that's happening on stage and you need to put music to it. You need to give the singers music that, that's perform this story. It, it's not like just writing a song. So I have two or three questions and we are done because you have a sound check. Um, do you remember the moment uh, when you said to yourself, okay, I'm a rock star now? I don't think of myself as a rock star. Or I think felt to exit? No, we're, I mean, yeah, when we were in Latin America the first few times and we had to get police escort out of the uh, airport. Okay. And we're like, a, you know, cars driving with a motorcycle police in front <laughs> to five-star hotels. Of course, then, but it's more like, you get the feeling, ah, this is how it is to be a rock star, but we didn't identify with it. Okay. We're, we just see ourselves as, you know, and some people making music. I, I think it's very typical Swedish. Most of us are, are mid-class people, and it's a more humble attitude in Sweden. Um, 
even bands that are, are you know, like Europe in the 80s, that get big headed or anything, just you know, regular people. If, and if you be, meet bands like Iron Maiden and ACDC, you know, they're like totally regular people. So I think it's more in the image of others. And I think the 80s is very much responsible for that with all the rock videos and mm -hmm. you know, the champagne, the girls, the dollars and all that. And I'm sure there were bands that were like that because they bought the myth or they were people from like really low working class and then all of a sudden they get millionaires and they couldn't handle it and they took drugs that fucked up their minds a lot. But people who have... Maybe, maybe it helps them some way to write songs? I don't know. Is that I, fuck up mind and all I stuff? I think there, you, you never get anything for free. If you take bands that took a lot of drugs, they, they did a lot of creative stuff while taking drugs. But it's like they get an advance on their paycheck, you know? Mm -hmm. Later, they've used it. Well, you know, that's also the way. Like Jimi Hendrix, all the Club 27, mm. that they create some genius music. But say go early. Well, look at Led Zeppelin, for instance. I mean, at the end, they were not a good band. If, if somebody else would have released their last few albums, you know, like mm -hmm. at least the last one, it was called In Through the Outdoor. Okay. Something like that's a, it's a shitty album. If any other band would have released it, nobody would have heard about it. Wow. And, I mean, the guitar player was lying on the floor uh, half of the day in the studio trying to record a guitar solo because I. They recorded it at Polar, mm -hmm. um, and since I know the guy from Polar, he told me a lot of stories there, and they were completely fucked right now. He, he would sit on a chair with a guitar like this for like half the day trying to record something, and then they record something and it's shit, so next day they have to try again. Wow. So, you, you pay the price. You... Sad and shitty story. <laughs> and they were talking about the band. Uh, where Teron ends as a band, and starts as your uh, own project, or contrary-wise? It's, it's both. It's a band, but the band is my project. Um, it could not be a theory without me, because theory was always about um, realizing my musical visions. But that doesn't mean that they can't be a band, and, you know, that they have a, a input of their creativity, and, um, that they also have a say. Uh, we discuss a lot of things and take decisions together. And, um, you know, they do a lot of musical contributions mm -hmm. also. It's just like I make a frame. Like this time I said, okay, now we're making a rock musical. So they have to get onto that and, you know, contribute into this. Um, before, maybe I said, now we're going to do an album like this, like Gothic Kabbalah. I said, now we're going to do a progressive album. So everybody have to, you know, cope with that. But once we've set this framework, people have a lot of liberty inside of that. You know? Like in Gothic Capella, I didn't write the majority of the music, uh, which I did in every al other album. Um, so as long as it sounds the way I want it to sound, I, I actually don't even care who writes the music. Okay, great, because uh, Sam said that it's, it's only a project, not a band. That, well, that, that's why I asked you. People always say a lot of things, and people often don't know the difference between a member and a hired person also. By the way, what's the difference? Uh, if you're a member, that means you always have a job with the band and you contribute and you know, you're part of decision taking and so on. If you're hired, that means, well, you're hired for a tour or for an album, but there are no guarantees that you want to work together again. Like uh, Lori Lewis in, in the start? Lewis, she's a member of the band and, and that's no. why she was a member of the band for a long time. And even though she don't tour with us anymore, she's still a member, because she's a member. Mm -hmm. So we will always record with her. Okay, and the last question. Uh, looking back in time, uh, what would it change in Tereon? I don't like the idea of regretting stuff, but the only thing I would have made undone is our second US tour. Uh, the first US tour was a failure. But I don't regret it because you need mm -hmm. to try, you know. And you know, okay. we owe the fans to go there once, and for our own experience, and, you know, you need to make experiences and try. Second time, I should have known better. Then we just repeated the mistake and made it worse. That's the only thing I regret. Otherwise, you know, I could have done a lot of things better, but why regret? You can do everything better. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a great show today. Thank you very much. We will.